Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at custom bevels in Blender. So recently I did a short on beveling in Blender and some of the options that you've got there. It was really popular, but one thing I couldn't cover because it would take more than a minute was going through the custom bevel options. And they're really useful for a number of reasons as they give you a couple of really cool presets. But most importantly, if you want to do a complex bevel shape, this is probably the best way to go about it, at least at the moment. So by complex bevels, I mean something a bit like this. So this is the bottom of a column in the Louvre in Paris. And yes, when I went to the Louvre, I did spend more time looking at the actual building and architecture than I did do most of the art, which caused a little bit of confusion from Mrs. Vall. So let's talk through the custom bevel option and what you can do with it. So I'm gonna start by just bringing in a cylinder and then I'm going to up this to, let's say 128, just so it's nice and rounded and I'm gonna scale that up and let's apply the scale. So what we're gonna do is bevel this top edge here and we're gonna use a custom bevel. So all you do is you press Control and B and you get your normal bevel options and pretty much just do it and click and at that point it doesn't really make a difference what you did but we're gonna talk through what we can do here. So this is standard sets up a super ellipse profile type but you can create a custom profile type which I'm gonna do by clicking here. And then you get this option of designing your own bevel which is obviously really fun. Now it does come with a number of presets and those are here. For example, you can start by just putting in some steps and you'll notice we get this really cool step profile, but at the moment you can't see it here. And this is the first thing that people do is they go, well, it's not working. It is, but for this to work, you need to have a lot of different, well, effectively loop cuts for this to work on. We do that by just adding in segments. So if I just scroll up the segments, you can see what it's doing here. So we actually need that many segments for this to work. But I normally just go on the safe side and put in something like 32 or 64. And you get other ones as well. For example, you get the support loops one, which I think is there so you can put in a bevel as well as using sub D and it will keep the shape. Never really used that that much. But you also get these really cool cornice moldings, which is a pretty standard sort of looking molding there, which I think looks brilliant. And this crown molding as well. So you've got those two options there especially the cornice I think looks great and it's very quick to just throw in on something and then create the rest of your bevel. I will say if I undo this, you can always just control and B and it will start doing that again, sticking with the previous bevel that you've got. You can still scroll up and down on your mouse wheel if you want to make this really smooth. So notice that's relatively close to 64 there, which is the other one I often go with. So they're very, very nice if you want to make something really quick. It's already there, you just throw it in. But we can also make custom ones as well. I'm going to bring in a cube again. Let's just scale that up so it's easier to look at and control an A and apply the scale. And we're going to make a custom bevel here. What I'm going to do is come into side view so we can see that. And then I'm going to shift an A and I'm going to bring in an image. And I want to do that in the background, not as a reference. Now, I will say this photo isn't perfect. If I just go to Shift and Z to an X-ray mode, we've got this here. I'm just going to rotate that round 90. And then I'm going to S to scale it on the X-axis. And I'm going to type minus 1 so it matches this corner. And that's just useful for the way the shape of the editing tool works. Let's just put that to somewhere, I don't know, there-ish. So we're going to go from here to here to make this bevel. You could go all the way down to this step as well. It's entirely up to you. But we do want it facing this way round. You'll see why when we start using the tool. So I'm going to zoom in so I can see that really closely. And importantly, I can see the edge that we're going to do this on. So I want to select this top edge, which is what I'm going to be doing it on. Let's go back into that side view again and go back to where we were zoomed in. And then Control and B. And we've still got that previous molding in. And I'm actually, because of the way these are done square, I'm gonna to have to go as far out as there. So notice I've gone wherever the furthest one was, which is there, even though this one doesn't need to be as far. Now, because I've done that on that annotation tool, I'm gonna to have to undo this and start again, but I wanted to demonstrate that. So there we go to there. Now, at this point, I'm gonna to go to the default. And I'm gonna scroll down there, and this is the important bit. Make sure you can see everything here but you can also see this. Now, the way this works is that effectively you just click on the line anywhere and you can move your bevel round and notice it will do the same there. Do make sure you've got your lots of segments here. I often prefer to go too high and then I'll lower it down if I need to. And we also have lots of options. You can see these here. So let's go through the basics. So first you just click on your segment and you can move around. So there, and as soon as you let go, it applies it to the bevel and you can click again to add another one. You can also, once you've clicked on one of those, click that X and it will get rid of it 
and again there, and I can get rid of it. The other thing you can do, let's just drag one here and drag it out, is you can change the bevel type. So it starts with this sort of automatically curving position. Then you can change the handle type to just be perfectly square. So I'm actually going to change that one there to be perfectly squared off and this one and put it up to the top. And I'm going to drag that across until I get to that corner there. It would be really useful if you could show this in real time. It just doesn't seem to want to work that way. And then I need to put another one somewhere here. Let's go there and change that to the straight. So what this does is this is actually going to start moving around all of these 64 segments that we put in. You'll notice it then starts to bunch the 64 segments up here while keeping this straight. If you do still want those edges there, you can click that sample straight edges. Though it does slightly over bias them because the way this works is it splits the edges between your different vertices. So notice at this point, we've got a third of them there, a third of them there, and a third of them there. So that really bunches these up. You can change that as well. If you go to sample even lengths, and then that puts everything to an even spacing. But notice on this corner here, it's had a bit of a problem because the positioning is different. So I tend to not use that sampling even lengths. And to be honest, most of the time, I don't use the sampling straight lengths either. Now let's get on to the next bit and I want to have one vertex here and I'm going to change that to this one where it starts evenly moving around the handles, which is really cool. But it's definitely not going to be what we're going to want to use here. But I just want to mention this one's really handy because say we get to the point where we've got one off the edge there that we can't see it, you can always drag that back in to scale it down. The other thing is you can zoom into this if you want to using these buttons here if you feel you need more detailing. The final one that we're going to look at, I'm actually going to come and click on this one here, is this one. And if you do that, it breaks it up into two separate handles. So we've got one handle coming off this way, it's going perfectly up at the moment, and this other handle here, which is very useful for these sharp edges. So I'm actually going to do the same and change this one into the same handle because we're going to want this one going pretty much straight down. So let's bring that back there. And then I can move that handle to about there, or maybe more. So notice I keep looking back up here to judge where I'm going. And I'll just play with that until it looks right. But you can see this is, it's just really easy to play around with. It really doesn't take much time. It would be really nice if you could see multiple handles at the same time. That is the one issue that I have with this. I'd love to set it so you can just see all the handles. So for example, I could judge that handle length to be about the same as that handle length and know that I'm getting something relatively symmetrical. But once you've got your object in, you can get a pretty good guess of this. Now, I do notice we've gone too far on this one because it's not actually even. So I need to go to about there get that straight down and then fiddle back around with these. So at this point, it's just a matter of fiddling with everything. Now at this point, I'm not going perfectly on the image because it is at a bit of a weird angle. So I do need to bear that in mind. And how you interpret that is gonna be up to you because I'm basing this on there's a bit of a parallax effect from this photo. But we can see what we've got now. We've got this, let's go out of X-ray mode and we've got our nice looking custom bevel that we can then use. So. Pretty happy with that. In fact, no, I'm not. It's not looking clean enough, so I need to up the segment. So all I can do now is, because I've got that custom bevel, is I can just undo it. That's Control and Z that. And then Control and B again, bring it back in, and then just come here. And let's do 128. And that's much better and more rounded. So hopefully from that, you can see how easy it is to make some really, really nice looking columns. Let's scale that up. Let's go to the Z axis, apply the scale, and then we can go into edge mode, control and R, click, control and B, take that down to just two, go somewhere around there, and then I can go into face mode, select those, Q, Alt on here, macro, bring that out to about the edge, let's go with there, and then go into edge mode, select that edge, control and B, and at the moment, we don't have enough segments here, 64. And then let's put that to the cornice one, which I really liked. And then I'm going to mirror that there. And then I can mirror that off this central object. And look, we've just suddenly got a really cool column with loads of detail in no time at all. Now, I will mention some problems with this because this isn't perfect. And I want to be very, very clear about that. And that issue is this. This does not save, if I just shift an A mesh and bring in a cube, this does not save what you've just made. So if I come in here, go into edge mode, 
and select those edges and I want to do the same thing again control and B and I want to come in here well I haven't got that and if I want to make it I'm now gonna have to go in and annoyingly make this all over again it's very very tedious that you can't save these the other thing that I'd love to have is that if you could basically just select this to be a curve so you could make one curve section of this and then just click on it and use it for that that would be amazing I don't know why that's not there they can use curves for so many other things in blender it just seems mad that, that doesn't exist I will mention you can also use this using a bevel modifier so if I just go add modifier well let's just undo that but if I go to add modifier and then bevel, you have the same option here. If you go to profile, you can go to custom and start fiddling around with things as you want to. So that's an option there as well. Though I generally have found limited use for that compared to doing it in real time in a destructive way. Now, the only way that I found of getting around this, if I just bring in another cube again, is that if I move this over, scale this up and apply the scale, if I do try to bevel this, so control and B and then make a custom bevel. Let's just do something really quick for the sake of this demonstration. Though actually I will say that's quite fun as a bevel. Anyway, so if you've done that once, if I come in and make a, let's say just a cylinder this time, let's bring that over here and scale that up. Then when I do that on the same edge again, it does maintain the last used bevel. So I can now use that again. So far, the only way I've found that to be of my advantage is that if you save this file, so file, save as, and then you go into, let's say, a new Blender file. Let's just say something just to prove the point that I'm going to go and come in here, Control and B, and then I will change that to one of the other custom bevels. So let's go for that. I'll put that up to 64 to see that it's worked. So... If you do something in a file and then make a new file, what's important is if I go back and open my old file, it has a memory of what your last action was. So for example, here I can shift an A mesh, bring in a cube, go into edge mode and bevel those and then go into custom. So notice it doesn't save that you've done a custom one last time, but as soon as you go to custom, it's got your last used custom bevel that you made here saved. So what you could theoretically do is have lots and lots of saved files with your favorite custom profiles. And then you'd come into that saved file, make your bevel and then copy and paste it into the file you're working on at the moment. It's far from perfect. It annoys me that you can't just do this with curves. That would just be vastly easier because you could save the curve as an asset, bring it into a file and then do it. Though thinking about it, you probably could do that with some sort of geometry node setup. I'll have a play around with that and if I have any success then I'll do a video on that as well. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and that's something you'd be interested in, do subscribe to the channel. So there we go, that's how we make custom bevel designs in Blender. It's relatively easy, pretty fun and great for copying real life architecture. If you found that useful please do give the video a like. As I said subscribe for more great content and if you want to support the channel further consider checking out the Patreon where you get these videos a week early, ad free and you get other perks as well. Have a great day, guys.